everyone, welcome back. It's been a long time since I've posted anything, but I have been moving studio. I'm sure you can see that I am now in a brand new space. Really, really uh, nice place to be working in. And uh, yeah, I took quite a long holiday as well. Um, I think it's really healthy for composers to actually deliberately take time away from writing music and not feel like we're churning stuff out all the time. So that is what I've done. And Move Studio are now in this fantastic space and uh, really enjoying working here. It takes a while to get used to a new space, you know, the new kind of um, atmosphere. I suppose that sounds quite arty, but it's true. It takes a long time to, when, you, when you're used to working in one space and get used to working in another space, um, it can take a while to get going. Anyway, after this long hiatus of not writing any music at all and having a long holiday and drinking lots of beer, um, this project came up. Um, it's uh, writing for a sync brief um, album, which I was really happy to be able to contribute to. The title is Victorious Orchestra, and this track is called Victory Unleashed. I'm going to play it for you now, and then um, yeah, we can talk about what I've uh, what I've kind of done on it. It's only a short piece. It's for orchestra. I'm using um, Spitfire BBC uh, BBC Symphony Pro, Abbey Road Orchestra Low Percussion, some East West stuff as well. Uh, and some other stuff from Plugin Alliance as well. But um, yeah, I'll talk you through this. Here is Victory Unleashed. So that was Victory Unleashed. Um, I had a lot of fun writing this piece. It's uh, It's been a while since I've written sort of epic orchestral music. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed, enjoyed doing this one. The piece is essentially based on this bass idea. So that's my main kind of hook. That's my main sort of theme. That is the thing which, which links the whole um, material together. Um, yeah, as a composer, I find it extremely important to really um, use limited amount of material um, as much as possible to give the piece a real sense of cohesion, so that it kind of feels like it's telling the same story all the way through. So that's uh, something which I which I like to do all the time. So I'm mixing these two bass sounds. The first one is Nif Audio Kniphonium. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Um, this is a really fun um, fun bass sound to use. Um, on its own, it sounds really dirty and kind of ugly. Mm -hmm. 
So out the box, it sounds amazing. And the next one I'm using is just the Logic inbuilt ESM. And when they're mixed together, quite a dirty bass sound. So I'm going to show you what processing I'm using on my bass bus. So first of all, SSL comp to glue the sounds together. Uh, some FabFilter Pro MB just to control some of the mid frequencies, just give it a bit more control. And then FabFilter Saturn to give it a um, lovely bit of distortion. And then Panagement as well, just to, um, at certain points, I move it further away and closer in the, in the stereo field. That's the basses. Um, moving up to the percussion. Um, so I'm using a combination of east-west sounds, uh, using quite a few of their, their high percussion. I really like their cymbals, I think they sound great. Anvils, tam-tam, um, hi-hits. Um, so let's just hear some of the high percussion now. So that's kind of giving the, the top end of the of the rhythmic drive. Okay, in the low percussion, we are using um, Spitfire's new Abbey Road Orchestra Low Percussion, and this is one of the first tracks I've actually submitted using uh, this percussion. I think it's absolutely incredible sound. Um, if we look at this, um, you'll see that I've actually got all the different microphones coming out as individual tracks, so I've had complete control over the sound. I'm not using any of the out the mids of the ambient mics, so we have a much closer, tighter sound um, using using the, the closer sounds here. Uh, so this is what they're sounding like. A really fantastic, uh, fantastically captured sound. And then using the bass drum as well. So that's the kind of low end that's going on. I'm also utilizing some Hans Zimmer big hits as well, which are amazing. That is essentially the low percussion. So that really gives the piece its kind of ominous drive. So here's the high percussion and the low percussion together. So that's the material that really holds um, everything together um, and really kind of grows and develops towards the end of the track. Okay, so this leads us on to what the brass are doing. Uh, at the very beginning, I'm actually using some east-west effects just because out the box, they just sound fantastic. That flutter tonguing, uh, low horns and brass. And then later on, the horns hold most of the um, harmonic content. Then adding the basses. So you can hear how that links in quite nicely. actually sounds pretty good on its own. Okay, so let's forget about the brass for just now. We've done the percussion. Let's have a quick look at the strings. Let's open up them. Again, I've done my usual thing of um, having all the different articulations and uh, the four different mics. So it looks more complicated than it is, but I've printed them down so it's only playing back the, the WAV files. So the processing is actually actually not being uh, not being rendered right now. In the beginning, the cello has this melody which which comes out um, 
the part of the introduction, and then the rest of the strings add staccato, um, uh, ostinato patterns to the rest of the material that's around it, and they start low and they get high. That's how I'm adding excitement to this material. So this is what the strings sound like on their own. And again, uh, the Spitfire BBC Symphony Orchestra sounds incredible here. These cellos are um, really, really fantastic. I've done quite a lot of uh, automation on them, of course, as you'd expect. So they're just adding a bit of support to the brass. And then later on, they build up to this. Which in context. So yeah, then that leads quite nicely into the choir. So the choir, um, I'm using east-west sounds um, I think it's their Diamond Choir, I can't remember, it's just kind of the first one that came to hand and uh, it works pretty well. So you notice uh, in the choir I've done uh, quite a lot of EQ, but I think it needs it to cut through in this mix. So the choir adds to the epicness that you get right at the very end. And I really wanted to save the... Uh, that moment, that, that special colour that the choir brings just for the very, very end. So it really feels like the whole piece lifts and rises at this moment. All the way through it, we've got these um, shouts, um, which I've got from East West as well. And it's just a combination of lots of different um, male shouts. Yeah. And again, just gives the whole thing that kind of rustic sort of sense. So that is essentially all the elements of this piece that I've gone through. So the last thing I'm going to show you is my mix bus. And this is uh, a preset which I just add to all of these uh, sync library tracks. And um, when I want things to be kind of ready very quickly, um, I normally mix with all these in. I think it kind of helps just get the sound right quickly. Um, so here I'm using Fresh Air as the first one, which adds a nice brightness and sparkle to the mix. And then we've got Pro Q3. This is just again adding quite a lot of brightness to everything. Uh, these are bypassed just now. Um, again, just uh, just cleaning up some bits and boosting some bits as well. Uh, sometimes I use Oxford Inflator, um, but I decided not to here just because I didn't. It wasn't really adding much to anything. And then of course another SSL. And again, this is um, just gluing everything together. Um, you can see it's got a very, very, very slow attack, a very fast release, just gluing all the sounds together, really. And then the last secret that I have here is the God Particle. Um, I love this plugin. It makes everything just sound so much better and rounded. So you can compare this is it without any of the Mixbus plugins in. <laughs> a lot duller. I'm definitely sending it quite hot anyway. And then with all of them in, take keep that out. Sounds a lot more controlled, the high end is a lot brighter. very subtle but um, I think it definitely makes a difference. So that was a kind of deep dive into this uh, this track here. If you have any questions please do let me know in the comments. I'm always delighted to hear from you. Um, again sorry it's been a long time since I've done anything on this channel but there is more content coming. Any questions or comments please do let me know and see you next time.